Hey, hey friends, welcome to this Hey Brownberry how-to. This is a tutorial that I filmed for you. It's a tutorial all about how to make stripy or scrappy projects like these socks without having to weave in your ends um, at the end of that project and how to create stripes that don't have what's called a jog. So in the tutorial, I'll show you how to incorporate a new color into a stripe and secure your ends so that you don't have the big job of weaving them all in again later on. I'll show you the method that I use in order to avoid that stair step effect that happens when you introduce a new yarn when knitting in the round. So enjoy, I hope it's helpful to you and saves you a lot of time in your knitting. The following techniques are great for projects with stripes of any size, either narrow stripes or thicker color blocks. In this case, I'm showing an example with a sock that I knit using different mini skeins, and I knit each mini skein until I thought the stripe was thick enough, and then I switched to another color. My intent is not to have very many ends to weave in once these socks are complete. I'll be using these two yarns and I want to create a new stripe. This first color, the natural yarn, has already been included in my sock. I've used it to knit a few rounds. The next stripe will be made with this speckled yarn, this brighter color. The key to this technique is that Adding a new color actually begins from the round before. This is important because it's part of weaving in your ends as you go. So the first thing I'm going to do is the round before I add my new color, I'm going to knit with the old color. I'll refer to these yarns as old color and new color throughout the rest of the tutorial. So the first step is knit most of the round in your old color. I'll just speed things up here. As I knit through the first portion of this round in the current color, what will become the old color? Since I'm using the magic loop method, I'm now moving to the second half of my round and I'll knit through those stitches until I come to about six or seven stitches from the end of this half of the round. You'll notice that in this case, I'm knitting English style, which means I'm forming my stitches using my right hand and tensioning the yarn in my right hand. I'm going to knit down this portion of the sock, but I will not go all the way to the end of the round. I've sped this portion up here because I'm just knitting across these stitches until I have about six or seven stitches remaining in the round. I've left some stitches unworked here in the current color. I've got about eight stitches remaining. The exact number doesn't matter. Somewhere between five stitches to eight stitches is a good number. Now I want to incorporate my new color. In order to add my new color, what I want to do is secure the end of the new color within the current round. And I'm going to do that by weaving in the new color as I knit the last few stitches in this round of the old color. I'm positioning my yarns just to make it easy to demonstrate. My new color that will be introduced is on the left, the old color 
that I'm sort of retiring in this round is on the right. You can see the last stitch I formed so far in the old color on the right hand side and the stitches remaining in this round left to work. Now we're going to take this new color and introduce it. This is the portion where we weave as we go. Take two or three inches of the new color, take that yarn end and lay it over top of the strand of your old color. We're going to continue knitting with the old color and this strand is going to get woven in as we knit. So just as usual, I prepare to knit the next stitch. I bring my old color underneath that end of the new color and form that stitch. That has already locked in the yarn end of the new color. On my next stitch, I'm going to secure the new color in my left hand because it just helps me not to have that strand loose. And I'm going to use my right hand to create the next stitch in the old color, but I go underneath the new color strand first and then form the stitch with the old color. This is the pattern we're going to repeat. I will knit a stitch just as normal in the old color. Then I'll knit the next stitch by putting my yarn, my needle tip in, going underneath the new color strand first and then forming the stitch. So you will alternate. Knit a stitch just as normal in the old color. Knit the next stitch by first going underneath the strand of the new color and then completing the knit stitch. And on this final stitch, I knit as normal. When you look at the completed stitches, at the front of your work, you only see the current color that you're working with, what we've been calling the old color. At the back of the work, you have secured the yarn end for the new color, and you've done that several stitches before the end of the round. So because you were forming every other stitch, by putting your needle underneath the new color strand and then knitting, you've essentially woven in that new color's yarn end. And that ends the round with the old color. The second portion of this process will make it so that as we begin the new round with our new color, we can secure the yarn end from our old color as well. Here I'll just prepare my needles by turning my work and preparing to knit the next round with the new color, my brightly colored yarn. Just as before, for demonstration purposes, I'm moving my yarns into position by putting my new color, the one I'm going to knit with, on the right and my old color, the one I'm retiring and won't be using anymore, on the left. That's just where I put the little minis of yarn to make it easier. So I'm going to begin the next round with this new color and I want to weave in the end of the old color so that I don't have to do that at the end of the project. To get this started, I'm just simply going to create my first stitch in the new color. So I'll knit a stitch with the new color. And similarly to the steps previous to this, I'm going to weave in as I go this old color into several stitches. Somewhere between five and eight stitches is usually good. To do that, on the second stitch, I will go underneath the old color with my needle tip and then 
knit that stitch in the new color. I'll alternate now by knitting the next stitch in the new color without doing anything different. On the following stitch, I'll go underneath the old color first and knit that stitch. Next, I'll just knit the stitch. And again, in the next one, I'll go underneath the old color and knit the stitch. By alternating going underneath the old color strand and knitting, and then just doing a standard knit stitch, I'm weaving in that old yarn in every other stitch to secure it. And you can see that if you look at the back of the work, just like before, I'm weaving in the old color strand in every other knit stitch of the new color. After I've done this weaving process for about five to eight stitches, I can stop there and just continue to knit with this new color. As I mentioned, this tutorial is also about seamless stripes, stripes that are created without getting a jog or a stair step effect in between colors. This is something that you can accomplish on the second round of your new color. You'll notice that on this round, I'm continuing to knit with the new color as normal, going into each stitch all the way around until this round is complete. Let's turn on the turbo jets and finish this round. This round is complete. Our new color has fully been introduced. So now let's make sure that the transition is seamless. See our end here is secure. And when we're finished, we can even snip that just short enough so it's not in the way. But right now let's take care of making this a seamless stripe. I'm not cutting any yarn ends yet or removing anything. In order to create a seamless stripe, it's a very simple technique. When beginning your second round in your new color, you're going to slip the first stitch in that second round. So instead of knitting, you're going to insert your needle purlwise in this first stitch. So to slip this first stitch purlwise, you're going to take your needle and insert from right to left, that's purlwise as though you were going to form a purl stitch. Then just slip that stitch off without knitting it. One more time, you're going to insert your needle tip purlwise right to left and slip that stitch off the needle. This creates an elongated stitch in the new color which will line up and better match in the stripe so that you don't have that stair step or jog effect where it looks really obvious that you've added this new color. Just that simple slip stitch on the second round of the new color and then you knit all the way around as you normally would. So what we're talking about when it comes to this jog or this uh, stair step effect, I want to show you a little bit of what I mean, what that looks like. If you see in this portion of my sock, I have a little bit of a stair step there. When I changed colors, I did not use the slip stitch technique. And you can see that there's an obvious line where I switched over. But in other areas of the sock, you can see that there is a very smooth transition between colors. That slip stitch gives you that smooth transition so that there is no obvious jog or stair step between the color blocks or the colored stripes. So we can just finish off our round as normal and continue in this color until we're ready to introduce a new one using in the weave as you go technique. Now I have both minis still attached here, so I've got some long ends still in play. But what I would do is I would trim, trim out the old color. You can snug it up a bit to make sure 
that you don't have any loose portions in your stitches. You can pull on each end just to make sure that they're not loose enough to show through on the right side of your work. And then either now or sometime later after some rounds of knitting, you can just trim off the end of the old color that you're no longer going to use. Looking on the inside here, you have the end of your current color where you introduced it to make the new stripe and you have your old color. You can just take your scissors and snip those to about a half inch. You don't want to snip them too short because if you do, then there's a possibility they may sneak out and poke through the front end of your work. And be careful not to snip the yarn you're currently working with. Let's have a look at the inside of this sock knit using this method. So you'll see throughout the different stripes or color blocks, I have my ends where I've woven in as I go, and I don't need to do anything else with these in order to wear them. There are a couple of places where I may have cut the ends a bit too short, so my caution to you would be leave yourself plenty of yarn tail so you don't have to worry about any of your yarn ends slipping out. Once you start wearing these as well, it becomes even less and less of an issue as things kind of rub together and stay in place. There you have it, friends. I hope you found these techniques helpful. I love the way it helps me to work with many different colors in a project, to do multiple stripes or color blocks, and to have those look really nice and give myself less work to do once the project is complete. Thank you so much for watching this Hey Brownberry How To tutorial. I hope it helps. Feel free to leave me comments and questions below the video. Happy knitting!